Uh, I'm sitting here with one of the uh, brighter minds in comedy right now. And I'm going to say that to y'all in a sense. I feel like as a voyeur of comedy that does comedy, that most of the people that watch like America's, they don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> okay. They don't know what's funny. They don't know. They don't so know we're behind at. the curtain now. Mm-hmm. And we see your sets or we know you, we know your grind, we know your get down, we, we get it, okay? But the genius is what I want to pull the curtain back and look at for a second because you're legitimately a genius. And that's not even with a joke being said. I'm talking about business acumen. I'm talking about where you position yourself in the game, how you move, mm-hmm. the way that you, you know, literally your your well, your me, station in the industry. Well, let me let me thank you for that. For sure. For being smart enough to notice that. I, I look, bro. I watch yeah, the game. Yeah. yeah but I'm are, asking. I'm, that's all pretext to ask you if you were the president and you were given a state of the union and say you were the president of all comedy right now. Mm-hmm. What is the state of our industry? Not as bad as the state of, of, of United. <laughs> not, We're doing not, better than this yeah, orange yeah. motherfucker. Okay. Right. Uh, not the state of the United. Uh, uh, the state of comedy uh, is in a good place as far as the comics. As far as the cancel culture, it's not letting us be what we want or need to be. But the comics... You know, there are a lot of strong comics out here these days. Um, uh, I don't laugh at shit. You know, it takes it takes uh, something different. And it's not that I'm a... I mean, I, fuck it, I am, I am a comedy snob. But it's because I've been doing this shit 22 years. Mm-hmm. And I've heard it all. I've seen it all. So for me, I just need something different. You know, there's uh, a few comedians that... I can appreciate you're one of them, which is why I always vouch for you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. That's a massive compliment. Here's the thing. There's people who say, oh, I watched everybody or I know everything or they feel like they do, you know, their diligence to watch a lot of comedy. But then you don't remember shit. You don't remember where you saw it. You don't know who said it. You don't know when they said it. You don't know what they said it on. Mm -hmm. This nigga don't forget nothing. He'll tell you when your joke is close to some shit from 85. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's like, wait, what? He'll make you go back and find the person. You're like, damn. Damn. I'm, I'm like a historian. That. Yeah, and that's what I want to say. I mm-hmm. feel like with confidence, you may be, at least for urban comics, and I don't even know, I, mean, I wouldn't even call you urban comic, but for all the I'm, black I'm, comics I know. I'm ethnic. I'm a Negro. But for all of us that I know, because mm-hmm. I don't know a shitload of the white people. Right. And I'm I'm going to say, there's probably a historian on their side that could tell you a shitload of fucking Kennison stuff. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But Nika, you are hands down, the you're the historian. When niggas go to the library of jokes, you're the one that's like, reference. <laughs> <laughs> so you're looking for the end of the hall on the left. That was Carlin, first special right. reference to war. And here we are again. You know I mean and so thank you for saying that you thought i was dope and i and, and i definitely likewise think you're dope you, no, you're, no, you're out ahead of me so I, i've been watching you work no but, you're a beast i mean you here's the thing with comedians you have um you have some comedians that write well you have some comedians that perform well mm-hmm. uh, but can't do the other well and then you have a few comics that can do both and then those are the ones that you know you have really got to appreciate so you're one that you know the writing is as good as well as the energy. You Man, know what I mean. Thank you. Command the room, which is something that a, a lot of people can't do. I mean, if you had a a place that's conducive for comedy and people want to actually listen, then you set up to win. But right. somewhere like the Savoy, where you know people are in the back ordering drinks and hollering at bitches, you just nigga they're in the front hollering at bitches right. and ordering drinks. They're hollering at the bitch they're supposed to order from. Right, like, and, and nigga, and no shade to. The Savoy is a dope room, but it's just, if it's crowded, it's, it's a lot. It's hard to. It's going to be a lot tonight. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm going to be it. I'm, I'm, you going? Probably. Yeah, I'm going to go. It's Chris Spencer's birthday, yeah. and it's going to be, he's going to actually take Hollywood to Inglewood for that. So whoever's on stage, <laughs> you better bust them in their goddamn you, you mouth need, in the first seven seconds. Cause... You need five earthquakes performing tonight. <laughs> five <laughs> earthquakes in a row. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so 
what I want to talk about is like I would like to talk about stuff that is not what we always talk about. I'm, I swear to God, I'm sick of the word. So where'd you get? Uh, tell us how you started. I, I am hate done. That shit. Give advice to a young guy. I'm done with all of that shit. I want to know what you hate about comedy. Like what? What have you? If at any point in your career, in 22 years, you have had to have had this mm-hmm. uh, epiphany where you're like, man, fuck this shit. Like, but what were the catalysts? You know, when you laid down and said, man, I might not do this shit no more. Well, I mean, this is what I do for a living. This is my livelihood. And Mm -hmm. I actually love the responsibility of being a comedian and um, making people happy. You know what I mean? Even if I don't feel like it. The shows that I don't feel like doing are always the best shows. I noticed that. It's like an instant reward from God for being professional. And still pushing through your desire to chill. And then you go up and have like epic assets. Yep. Gold is up there. It always happens. Um, so there's never been a point, even when I was a starving artist, there was never a point where I was like, I ain't doing this shit. Okay. Uh, the things that I hate about it now is that I hate going to... Um, Doing a show where there's a bunch of comedians, like the Laugh Factory, where I'm performing. 17 comics. And right and it's a lot of comics. I hate it because I still have to watch. I'm not the guy that's really just going to sit in the back. Excuse me. I like to watch because I want to see what the younger comics are talking about. Or I want to see the topics that are being discussed prior to me going on stage so I don't go up there and talk about some similar yeah, shit. because they step on your premise. And right. if they do, now you know how to segue in around and get into it. Right. You can even say, just like what's name said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, I still watch. but and, and then every once in a while, somebody will go on stage that I haven't seen before. I'm like, oh, shit, this motherfucker's funny. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's very rare. Yeah. This is it's a seldom occurrence, but it happens sometimes. And... And for the people that are watching this, don't don't ever think that when I say things like that, that means that I think I'm better than anybody or all mm. that. You know, I don't even like watching my own fucking self. Mm-hmm. You know, so but just because it's like it's like an ugly motherfucker. It's like some, telling the ugly dude he can't like pretty bitches. You said that like you were adorable, huh? <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, like a skinny nigga telling like this right, I'm not, tell, I'm, tell not saying I'm, <laughs> I'm not saying I'm a I'm not saying I'm a I'm a I'm a good looking for a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know this is the cat clock. That's the right. that's the whole shit. So <laughs> good looking for a comedian. So, is facts. But I mean you know, it's like if somebody say, "Well, if you like, oh, this like, motherfucker, look at you, I'm like, so what, motherfucker? I got eyes. Right. My eyes work. Right. I know what's ugly right. and what's not. If, just because I'm ugly, don't mean right. I got to like an ugly. Because I can't run a four four forty, don't mean I don't need to call no plays. Like, right. You know, I understand. <laughs> it's right. an observation. So yeah. So I mean, whether people think I'm funny or not, you know, everybody has their opinion. I don't. I don't care. You know, I know the the masses do, which is why I do well, and I, you know, I sell a couple tickets here and there. Sometimes I do. Anyway, so, um, yeah, just because I don't think people are, are funny doesn't mean I think I'm better than anyone. Just put that out there. Cool. I mean, it's cool of you to even pretense it with that. I, I just be talking, and they can take it for how it is. Um, I, I feel you, you know. I'm done giving but, them context. Like, at this point, they should know my spirit and that I'm a good guy. But the, you know what? The thing is, you're friendlier than I am, so people usually do know your spirit, mm-hmm. whereas people mm-hmm. of, often uh, – have a bad idea of, of of who I am. You know what I'm saying? You probably are a hell of a poker player. If I played poker, I could be, yeah. Yeah, because not knowing what's on your mind or what you're thinking at that moment is a good look. You know what I mean? Because when you first was like, he's a cold nigga, or whatever you told me, I was like, oh, shit. Other than that, I didn't feel that I didn't feel like you didn't like me, but I did, I just was like, oh, Listen, this is different. You could be on stage, There's I could no be in the back really. dying. It's never gonna be a time where I'm gonna run up to you and give you, yo, you hey, killed yeah. that. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. Uh, I could be dying. You get set. <laughs> you could be dying and say good set. <laughs> dying. <laughs> this See, got yeah. shot twice. That nigga was funny. Yeah, fist bump. Good set, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's solid. I so, might not. There may be a, a specific joke mm-hmm. that, you know, I might be like, yo, I really like that joke. I, I'll give you specific props. But then sometimes I don't even do that because it's so fucking weird when somebody does it to me. You it's know? too specific. you like, heck, what well, well, just like the, you said, the cat clock shit. Like, if somebody say, like, yo, that joke you did that? I'm like, all right, thanks. You know? <laughs> right, right, Thinking right. You don't know how to take a compliment and shit. 
you can't you can't laugh at it. This is your joke, you know. Yeah, start taking them. Yeah, I, be like hey, yeah, appreciate it. Nigga. I, I mean, that's what I say, yeah, but it's just still to, fucking weird. That shit hit popular culture, like you know what I'm saying, and and that's our responsibility: make the world laugh, but also to influence the culture. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm gonna shift to some because um, I feel like I know a little bit more about um comics and the average person and 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 I want but I want to know your I want to know your motor your engine what why like what makes you what makes you keep going what makes you tick why but like how how was that originally mm-hmm. coming up and then how is that now uh my early years you know you just be excited about new opportunities, mm. you know, and you're excited to perform in front of different people. And then it's like, oh shit, I'm performing at a comedy club. I'm getting, I'm out of state. Mm-hmm. You know, you're just excited about testing out your shit in front of different people. And then you, as you do that, you, you start to learn how to switch speeds. Cause um, I always like to watch, whenever I'm performing, I always like to watch. Um, a little bit of the person that's on before me mm-hmm. so I can gauge the energy of the audience, mm-hmm. what they're laughing at, what they're not, and then I can like, all right, I know how to approach it. Um, so just the excitement of it all in the early years is like, yo, this shit is dope. Uh, I see some light. Right. You know, I, I see some light at the end of the tunnel. Now, um, the thing that makes me tick is just more, it's more about the creative process now. Mm. It's like, you know, when I go to uh, the ha ha is usually like my spot to work out That's at. That's the home club. It's, it's the workout spot. I, yeah. I, I used to live around the corner from there, but I moved now. So, but when I go in there, and those new jokes hit, like that's literally one of my favorite feelings. You know, in life, you know, I deal with I deal with depression a little bit. So that creating process mm-hmm. when you wrote something and then you try it and it works. That's like one of my favorite feelings awesome. in in all of life. Yeah, I tell you some other shit because I that and busting the nut. Well, I shared that sentiment too. <laughs> um, that okay, that busting the nut, mm-hmm. a, a good Q tip. Um, it's, it's good ass food. <laughs> yeah, good food from the right person handing it to you. Mm-hmm. You feel all of the shit, and then making something like because I do some graphic work and stuff. Like when you make something and then. It's printed or given to you on something you can tangibly hold. Mm-hmm. That's wild to me. Like I made this graphic; it was flat mm-hmm. on a see? computer screen, and then it's so, on a fucking cup. Like it's on a th- like that's this bugs me out that I can hold like whoa, you know what make I'm saying? you feel like you sculpted the cup and everything. Yeah, I feel like I did it all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's just nuts to me that the idea that came from my mind that I was able to put out mm-hmm. that. It's I can hold it. Yeah, you pulled something from your imagination and made it tangible. Right, and then and then we quantify it by the laughs. You know what I'm saying? And right. So that's an awesome ass feeling. What is the last, if you can, for the sake of your uh, ability to be the librarian of the game? What's the last, most recent, I'll say, thing that somebody said where you're like, uh, motherfucker, that should have been me that said that shit. Like you know what I'm saying? I'll t- I'll give you one while you while you think, but Roy Woods just dropped a bit about the uh, eighty million on Trump's head. That shit was great. That was phenomenal. When he said there's not enough spaces on the deposit slip, I was like, this mother. The boxes. Yeah. You you did something recently. Kaepernick. What did, what was it? What'd you say? What'd you I said, say? I said uh, Miles Garrett hit the white boy over the head to create a job opening for uh, Kaepernick, <laughs> and then and then I said the, the starting quarterback would have to be fucked all up for them to put Cap into the game because all that social injustice shit. Uh-huh. And so the nigga goes out and he's all fucked up, and his coach is like, "Man, take this stick and get your blind ass back out there." And then he comes <laughs> off, and then he gets a he gets a C and I dog too. Like he has everything on the field but put Cap in anything but Cap. Nigga. Was that it? Yeah, that's it. That that's, motherfucker was cold. I I commented on whatever it was that. That's when you comment on you. Were it was like, that? Yeah, you're like, this is good. It can't look it's, the same it, now as I'm like, and right? I said. It's still what you're saying. <laughs> like, what you're saying is is funny as hell. It's just I thought I thought I remember something else, but it must have been it because yeah, it must have been about cat. I freestyle a lot too, but what you commented on on Instagram mm-hmm. was the Kaepernick bit, right? And when you did, I was like, <laughs> I got one of the whole ass niggas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I wanted to put it on there so bad because I'm like, I have to for somebody to say my shit or have a similar idea. It's too many. It's right. motherfuckers out here smart 
that are thinking as hard as they can on different angles on things. And then there's other people who are out here dumb who are just trying to find shit to mimic and say. I want to be all of them to it. That's all I was trying to get at. Trey Elliott um, has a, this new bit about this girl he was dating. It, it shit is... And not, not to spend too much time with him, but Trey is one of those comedians who uh, does well, mm-hmm. um, but doesn't. He's never. He he thinks that he's supposed to have these opportunities, but I always tell him like, "Yo, you're doing a good job, but there's nothing about your set that's standing out from the other people that are performing." And he don't flip the roof, right? He like, do his thing. He held his spot down, but the roof don't get flipped, right? Like he was upset about not being able to uh, do Def Jam, and I'm like, "Yo, yeah, the people that they picked." You know, they're comparable to you. You know, it ain't like you can say. It's like a, a split decision fight. Right, Like, right. you got to accept, like, all right. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they, they could have went either way. makes you special or not? Right. Yeah. But he has this new bit that's, you know, it's a strong bit when the whole bit is probably like 10 minutes, 8 to 10 minutes. Oh, yeah, he's rocking through. He got a new bit that's, that's going to change some things for him. And I'm looking, I'm like, not that I was like, I wish I would have wrote that because it's personal stuff. Right, right. But it was like. I was proud of him. Like, you got something. Got you something. You got something right and there. And that's how I was explaining to somebody. They're like, how do you make it? How do you blow up? I was like, nigga, bit by bit. Mm-hmm. Because you so, have a bit and somebody's like, nigga, have you seen such and such and such? You know what I mean? And right. now your name relevance is up. So I tell people who are like, what do I do next? Because like, nigga, go right. Like, you always, go. If you, Trey got one, I want to see it. You know what I'm saying? He, he, got, he got a nice one. But you always want something to where people are going to be able to remember. Like, you know, if somebody said... Uh, yo, you know Nate Jackson. And I'm like, who that? And then I'm like, the nigga that do the joke with, oh. Ah, that nigga, yeah. So you always want one of those. You want to leave people with that so that people know your joke more than you know your fucking name. Cat clock. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Every every special I do, anything I do, I want to have something that kind of just sticks out, you know. Uh, one of the reasons why Kev got so big is because he always had quotable shit. It's like Dave Chappelle in the... Um, the Lil John shit, the, you know, he mm-hmm. couldn't go nowhere where they were like, what? what? You yeah. know, all that mm-hmm. stuff. So Kev always had quotable stuff in his specials, and that's what people want. I mean, if you look back at You So Crazy, which at the time, even looking back at it, how I felt at the at that time, it really wasn't even that funny. It's not that funny now. You talking about Martin Lawrence? Martin Lawrence. Nigga, which one was the special where Martin said, you got to keep shit spicy with your girl, sometimes you got to kick her in the pussy? Wow, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if it nigga, was when I crazy. tell you I had to stop watching that shit, I paused it like, this that nigga just kicking me? <laughs> like, I could, <laughs> my mind, he, he went to a region of dark matter that hadn't been active, nigga. When uh-huh. he kicked that pussy, I laughed so hard, nigga, I stopped everything. I don't know which one. Maybe that was the like, most like, recent one. With your bitch, man. Fuck role play, man. Just walk up, kick your bitch in the pussy, nigga. Wow, that nigga kicked. Oh, naive. I, <laughs> I lost it. Oh. But, but, I mean, the point I'm trying to make, though, is that and no shade to Martin because Martin is a legend. No, sh- The point I'm trying to make is there was so much quotable shit. So, mm-hmm. as a kid, I remember taking parts of his material and quoting it at school the next day. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So, having quotable shit uh, sometimes can be better than having hilarity. Yep. You know, because people want to be able to look at their friend and be like, ha, you so motherfucking crazy. You know what yep. I'm saying? You want to do that with your boy all day in school. Yeah. Quotable stuff. That's what I think was the key to success for the Chappelle show. He was very repetitious on there. Yep. He didn't just say, I'm Rick James. Bitch, Rich, once. bitch. He all said that all the time. Everything kept on coming. So when you go to school the next day and you miss the episode, you're like, what the fuck is everybody talking about? Right. Because he affected the culture. Like, we tuned in so we knew what to say the next day. So, um, yeah, that's dope, man. What um, a lot of people don't know, and I, I was I promised myself I was going to do this without the type of questions I'm about to ask, but I'm going to ask this just this one what because else? I think it's for relevance. I think it's for um, people's understanding. I read I read Kevin's book, and he talks I about got the audio. I had no time to be reading that. So Joy was like, "Nigga, I'm not reading that shit." <laughs> I listened to it on the plane to South Africa for a little while, and she wrote a book, and yeah. But I'm asking it to say like because when I read the book and. What my hunch was confirmed mm-hmm. that uh, you were one of Kevin's initial influences. Influences and like he saw you and was like, "I should try that shit." Nah, that's what it said. No, nah, you read it. You read that motherfucker wrong. <laughs> what did he <it> say? <laughs> nah, uh, Kev was doing stand up before me. I I don't know who he said was. I know Keith was it Spank that was before N- him. No, Spank 
was influenced by Kev. Okay. So Kev and Spank knew each other in from high school from playing basketball. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then they were cool once uh they once Spank got in college and uh one of Spank's tight homies was roommates with Kev. Okay. So Kev started doing stand up and Spank saw him perform a few times and he was like, Man, I can do that shit. Because it was just like anybody else. I mean, uh, Kev was telling people he wanted to do stand up. People were like, get the fuck out of here. You ain't funny. Right. You know what I'm saying, motherfuckers? Mm-hmm. That, like, your family always say that shit because they don't know you. They don't know that you're funny because they don't know the asshole you are in school. Right. So, uh, Spank saw Kev perform and then he started like three, four years later. Really? Yeah, just on something. So I could I do that think, shit. And I'm clearly I'm wrong, mm-hmm. but I'll stay in the wrong vein and know it. But I, what I was under the impression was it was either you or. Spank that Kevin saw nah. perform. Like he said, like Spank had been doing comedy on the scene in Philly and he had a couple nice outfits and shit. And he was like, ah, I, I want to do that shit too. Like it was based on the outfit Spank had on or some shit. Nah, I definitely wasn't. It wasn't either of us that uh, influenced him. I mean, that'd be some embarrassing shit. You know? <laughs> you <think laughs> I so? influenced this nigga now. I'm his opener. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> It just depends on sometimes. A, 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 I'm just talking a, a, shit. A, yeah, yeah, but I'm just saying a cookie. <laughs> I mean, I was watching um, Chris D'Elia walk on stage with um, Brian Callen in Phoenix <clears throat> as a prank, and he used to he used to be uh, Callen's opener, right? And so he's you know he's talking shit. I, last time I was here, I did Comerica, and you know it's, you know about five of these can fit in that motherfucker, and we did two <laughs> shows. Like, he was talking shit, right? So. If the game goes the way it's supposed to, there should be plenty of uh, Padawan surpassing Jedi, and there should be plenty of uh, you know. The but, but Brian Callen is not opening for him now, though. No, I feel you. <laughs> that's, that's a whole nother humble. Pie. Yeah, he just kind of shit like, "Hey, I'm doing better than you." <laughs> right. Yeah. But nah, um, I no, I had no influence on him. I didn't meet Kev um, till I was probably like a, a year in the game. I mean, I was performing at my school, just doing little shows here and there. Whole school. Temple, Temple University, of Philadelphia, hosting talent shows and shit like that, and um, he hosted a little show at my school one time that was for students that was actually I kind of I just I changed everything at my school. I ain't gonna change everything, but well, talk your shit. I uh, I decided talk about your legacy. I decided I wanted to do stand up. Okay, and then other guys was like, oh shit, I want to try it too. So okay, so they started having a couple shows at my school. Um, that were for us, the students. Right. And then whenever other comedians came to school, I would always host. You know, the um, the promoters would take advantage of me. You know, but I was just right. happy to be doing it. Shout out to Wigs. <laughs> <laughs> That's my college. Yeah. Like, yeah, I brought Kevin everywhere he ever went when he first started Every, going. So everybody want to take credit for some shit. shit. Get the fuck out of here, yeah, man. It took everybody. Yeah. It took everybody. I discovered him. Yeah. At the yeah. end of the day, in my opinion, and I could be wrong, because you know what I'm saying, with this. Seattle Sonics on my hat. I'm under the impression that the city of Seattle had a lot to do with Kevin's success. People from the city. Why do you think that? Because Jeff Clanagan, Code Black Entertainment, is from Seattle, and that helped for distribution. I'm not saying it made him. Okay. And then the first couple of specials out the blocks, some of the um, people who helped invest in it were the Babineau brothers that were the Seattle Seahawks and stuff to help finance specials and things. Okay. And that didn't I mean, make it either because they had to. he had to be dope, but... If, I think if that's they, cool. If those motherfuckers are responsible for Kevin's success, then Marvin Gaye is responsible for me being born, motherfucker. <laughs> In a way, <laughs> if Marvin didn't make the music for your daddy to fuck exactly. to, then you wouldn't be here. <laughs> right. I got that. Yeah. But I just think that it's dope that a city that's like a D market that is out of the way, that is not one. When you talk about major cities that have produced major comics, and you Seattle does not come out your mouth. You're like D.C., Chicago, Philly. Mm-hmm. Like you say... Cities, you know, cities with more heart and and Seattle. I'm not knocking, but when it comes down to it, it's not a city that's getting mentioned. But to find out that anybody from the city, from the town, had a role in any way, shape, or form in helping mm-hmm. with the success of is exciting to me. Being from there, I'm like, nigga, right. we could still leave a footprint from way the fuck up here. Seattle's dope. I like Seattle. I mean, Seattle's like super North Bay. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely like a little... It's, it's like, like a Oakland Junior. It's like North, North <laughs> Oakland. Right. <laughs> For sure. With rain. <laughs> but we I, skipped over all of Oregon and still right. kept the bay. It's ridiculous. I used to go to Seattle um, a lot when I was a kid. Um, my dad is a flight attendant, right? United. So, right. So um, one of his friend's co-workers was uh, 
Seattle, she lived in Seattle, and her son was a ball boy for the Supersonics. So I used to be able to go out there, hang out with him, wow. and go to Sonics games and shit. And um, nobody believed me. None Why? of my friends believed me. Oh, that you're like, I just was at the game and all that? And they I mean, I would take the red eye home. <laughs> like wow. on Sunday and, and get for Monday morning for school. I was, like, I, was like, I was in Seattle yesterday. To watch the Sonics play? Just to be hanging out, you know, not to watch the game. If I was there and they had a game, then I would go. Yeah, that's dope. Um, hung out with Sean, Sean Kemp. I Did the nigga this. breath stink when you was with him? Well, he was a rookie. <laughs> Uh, yes. I don't. <laughs> I wasn't close enough. I mean, fuck. Maybe as a rookie, he was like so worried about how he was coming off of you. He still brushed his tongue, but nigga, I wasn't in his face to smell Ooh, his breath. Nigga, I hosted some event, and that <laughs> nigga was like, and now the comedian that's gonna host the show, Nate Jackson. I came up, nigga, the microphone. <laughs> I'll never forget. It, it was so bad it replaced every dunk I saw him do. And I was a major that's fan. A, that's only one. You can't give somebody the bad breath rap off of one experience. Yeah. Everybody has it. You want to hear the other two stories? Um. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm Jesus saying? Christ. The type of nigga like, man, you want a piece of gum? No, nah, I'm good. Nigga. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do about your breath? Sean Kemp's breath? Whoo! Anybody in Seattle watching us that knows that they're gonna be like Nate Wild as hell for putting Sean out like that. Fuck it, nigga, brush your tongue. He don't. He don't look like he has good breath. <laughs> as far as, as far I'm, as uh, breath, I mean, I believe it's not it. Breathtaking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that was that was one of the best days of my childhood, man. I he was a rookie. Um, he picked because he took all. He was only nineteen, so he took yeah. all the ball boys out. They were like teenagers, only a few years younger than him. And he's to the mall, so I happened to be there. So I got to ride with him too. He had a fucking Jeep Cherokee. Oh, dope. I had to sit behind this nigga. And I was only 14. So, so I was he's small. way back and shit. Yeah. And we went to the mall, we went back to his place, and we played Tecmo Bowl. And Dana Barrows, who was also a rookie, was uh, living upstairs. He came down and was playing. That shit was, them niggas was roasting the shit out of me. <laughs> what was they I was, saying? The, my boy that, I, that um, was the ball boy, he had clippers, right? He used to cut his own hair. So, you know, I start fucking with my hair, and oh, then I just keep. Your shit up I while fuck, you're over there. I, I, I fuck my shit up bad, and they were they were <laughs> killing me. But I was busting their ass. What, made you, what made you cut your own hair, man? You just you like I right, I'm just hit, hit a couple. <laughs> I'm gonna trim it a little bit. No guard or nothing. You just nah, I'm, like, I'm free handing. I'm free handing. Oh my god! And then I just kept like I just kept going lower and lower. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, you remember them old wooden door stops? <laughs> the triangle <Wait>. joint? <laughs> so you gave us all front Gumby. That's how my shit was. Bro. My shit was fucked. They was killing me. Did they me. fix it? Did your boy take the clip? Like, man, let me just try to fix this. Nah, it was... I was 14. Dude, they remember this. They remember the he day know. the little kid came over, fucked his hair up, and then beat them at Tech Mobile all day they, long. I guarantee you they don't remember that shit. I get, they, there's no they way can't. he does it. They, and I haven't seen him ever again since that day. And I always said, for a long time I said, when I if I see him again, then I'm going to say something. But at now, at you know, 26 years later, mm -hmm. 27 years they later. remember. You've got the same face. They don't They've watched you on TV like that's the wedge head nigga. I swear to God, <laughs> I could be tripping. Sean, is this the wedge head nigga? And Sean be like, no, yo, oh. they be like, nigga, never mind, because his breath stink. But the <laughs> look, the nigga that you that's in here right now with yeah. us, if I see him tomorrow, I'm not gonna remember him. Yeah, but you came over and whooped everybody ass on Tech Mobile. They not gonna remember that and shit. And fucked your hair up. They're not gonna remember that. I didn't fuck it up at his house. I fucked it up at my boy's place. Okay. And then went out with the bad cut. <laughs> like, fuck it. I ain't yeah. got time. But um, I may, maybe I'll still ask him. But he, he got he nigga done a lot of drugs. He done a lot of drugs. Sean Kemp. Yeah, he has done a lot of something because his tongue. <laughs> that nigga tongue smell like it's a slap boxer, nigga. I, I'm telling you. <laughs> and people watch all those old Rain Man dunks and they just love Sean Kemp and I do too. But I cannot get over that that, that brother's. Oh my god, horrible, insane. So tell me this, mm -hmm. right? Um, that's thirty minutes. We, Damn, we can go. We, we, we go if you want. Bet. So I want to know. This is my new. This is my new. I think it's going to be on every episode question because this motherfucker good. Why are you funny? Because I'm smart. Okay, but think back to when you started and started to cultivate your funny. Why? I think there's. Now I'll say this. There's two lanes mm -hmm. that I'm aware of. Maybe you can tell me a third. One is uh, you're ugly. 
<laughs> and everybody fucking with you. Mm. So you develop get him off me shit. You know what I'm saying? Like Kevin's like, he's so little, everybody kept fucking with him. So he got funny to keep niggas off of him. So you're you're or asking how I developed the sense of humor. That's what your question well, I is. I want to know how you yeah, how you yeah, how you watered it. Why why are you funny? Second way, other route is you're just quicker. You're always more clever. Mm. You Generally, your words cut the best in class. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You were the low key, the verbal bully. That was me. Yeah. I, I mean, with uh, me, it was just always watching stand. You see, you got to understand, I was watching Saturday Night Live, Eddie Murphy, all that shit at five years old when I had no business watching mm. it. And then I, not only did I understand how cool it was to make people laugh, but I understood how it felt to laugh. And, um, you ever laugh so you ever laugh so hard and long that you be itching? Yeah, Your stomach be fucking itching. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I haven't had laughs like I don't have laughs like that really anymore. Every once sometime we do radio, I'll get I'll laugh so hard I start crying. It builds up. You get the, the tears, yeah. but that shit where you laugh so hard your inside of your stomach be itching. <laughs> like that was just like, yo, laughing is the best thing ever. So just being a, a fan of stand up, watching it so much, you just you go from quoting shit to trying to be funny yourself. Right. Trying to make people laugh. And uh, I did that, but I wasn't the class clown. You know, I, I grew up, it's a uh, comedian named Jonathan Martin, who I've known since five years old. We were in kindergarten together. We graduated from Jonathan high school together. Jonathan Martin with the eyebrows? Yeah. We yeah. graduated from high school together. He was the class clown. He used to be, you know. He that nigga got a joke about these big ass titties. The we bass put, drum, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a funny nigga, man. Yeah. Shout out to Jonathan White. Hey, what's your fucked up voice, nigga? Yeah. <laughs> that's a good nigga. Jonathan, it was like uh, he was like what Mar. He's like Marlon Wayans, you know. Okay. Marlon Wayans would go far to get a laugh, like that's mm-hmm. how Jonathan was in school. Um, this motherfucker show up with the dread wig on. This motherfucker had a he had this thing where. You put a, a dollar on this little thing, and then you like, when somebody yeah, reach yeah you're like, yo, that's your dollar, and then you reach for this thing, you press the button, and the dollar fly in his hand. <laughs> he had like shit that you only saw on TV. He had the flower with the squirt water. <laughs> 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 I used to be in school dying. Like, where the fuck do you get this shit you from? Got a debit card. There wasn't no Amazon back then. <laughs> right. Where the fuck, you getting this shit? They got a joke shop in North Philly. You don't talk about Jersey, bro. I'm from Jersey. He's from North Philly, though, ain't he? No. Both we, y'all from Jersey. We from Hills Island, New Jersey. Yeah. What's wh- tell me about this, this? Where in Jersey you're from? Uh, New, New Jersey is um, uh, I mean Hillside is uh, it's right next to Newark, so it's hood adjacent, as um, James Davis would say. Yeah. And um, you know, it was just a little town that everybody, all the black people from there, they most you know their parents were from Newark, and okay. it was like you went next door if you got a little little money, <clears throat> or got your life together enough to. Live in the quote unquote suburbs, but and it was we had the tracks basically one side of town uh-huh. was black, the other side was white. And um, when I was it's only two miles, very small town. When I was in leaving kindergarten, going to first grade, they decided to integrate the schools because one side was black, one side was white. So I ended up having to go to a school all in the other side of town, uh, a, lo- a long walk every day. But you know, it was cool, you know, dealt with uh little bit of racism growing up, shit that you didn't really know, you weren't old enough to realize. You look mm-hmm. back like, that was some racist shit yeah, I dealt with. with me, but you yeah. don't know why. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but yeah, I mean, my child- Everybody childhood. get out of the pool! Like, <laughs> 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 I just want to swim. Right. <laughs> right, no, my uh, my town was, was very cool, you know, it was safe. Um, it's worse now, but it's not the most dangerous place to live. Um, I felt like the education was cool. And I had a great childhood, all in all. That's what's up. So when you, uh, when somebody asks you where you're from. I always say Hillside. I never say Newark. Okay. I never say Newark. Because I'm from Lacey. Um, but you say Seattle. I have to sometimes. Because I have no point of reference for where that is. And well, it's the same thing with where I'm from. But I always felt like, yo, I'd rather put my town on the map. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Nobody from there has really ever done anything. You know, a couple, couple athletes. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as entertainment... Nobody has done even what I've done this far, which ain't shit. So I always felt like I want to represent where I'm from. Right. And I could easily say Newark because my family's more, from there. The and I'm literally they, two houses. I'm like right by the border. From Newark. Mm-hmm. That's what's up. So you used to fight the niggas from Newark. Like, yeah. Nah, I was hillside, just, nigga. I just walk in, further into Hillside. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's newer. Yeah. That's, what's <laughs> that's what's up. Well, I'm glad I got to at least say that because as much as I've done research and watched your stuff, I, I wouldn't have known to be specific about Hillside on you. And you low-key banged on me. And to be honest, you were like, because <laughs> a lot of people think I'm from Philly and I hate that shit. Because I don't, I mean, I don't really like anything about Philly, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like I don't like the sports teams. Okay. Uh, I don't like the way the city's set up. Okay. It is set up fucked up. Yeah. The, I mean. I like Mitchell and Ness. I, w- I will say this about Philly. Uh, first of all, I got a lot of good friends from there. Mm-hmm. And I will say this. I became a man in Philadelphia because I was there from my freshman year in college all the way till I moved here, which was right before I turned 30. Okay. So, um, it has some something to do with my becoming, evolving into a man. Some molding happened in Philly. Yeah, um, but it, that would happen anywhere. It just happened. Just but that's I was where there. You were when you I were there. That's where and I so was. You, you were there your senior year of high school. No, I went to college there. I moved there for college, and Temple. then. I, yeah, and I don't even I don't even say that I lived there my first year because I went home after the first year okay. uh, for the summer. The second year, I got an apartment off campus, so I say I lived there for 11 years. So they say you're from where you lost your virginity. So I'm from Hillside. I thought you were like, so I'm from Newark. That's <laughs> I wanted that moment so bad, so I, then I'm from Newark. Yeah. <laughs> the bitches over there be yeah. fucking. <laughs> That's where you go get your new work. Nigga. Right. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's fucked up and funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but this is the part of the episode where you just tell them, you know, the regular shit, where you at, where they can find you, where they can see you. And, and uh, I just want to say thank you for coming by and, and fucking with it. Man, it's all good, bro. I always got to, you know, do the little shit. And then, uh, Come get back. <laughs> Come throw a rope back. And it I got to do the little shit, you know, look out for my people. Nah, um, you my guy, man. Whatever you want, I'm always going to be there. And um, this nigga got me a bottle cleaner for my baby. You know what I mean? Which which was only five dollars, but I only had six when I got it. But so <laughs> shit. But I appreciate it because he took the time to look at the fucking registry to see what we needed and got something. I had two friends come to the baby shower. My baby shower was lit. Was you there? He was there, right? I was out of town. He's out of town, like always. Over, My baby shower was lit, right? I had food and I had two drink tickets for every person. Wow. So you basically for attending, you basically got fifty dollars worth of shit. Two people, a couple, they came and them motherfuckers gave me a gift card for twenty five dollars. So shit. I was in debt with <laughs> between them. Yeah, you know, and I'm like, God damn, I know it's rough out here, but if you're gonna give me twenty, this listen, this goes to anybody. If you're going to give somebody, if you don't have money to give somebody something for uh, whether it be wedding, um, engagement party, whatever there's a registry, with a, a baby, anything with a, with a registry, mm-hmm. buy something off the registry. Spending $8 on something on a registry is better than giving a $25 gift card between two people. Right. Now, I don't know if everybody agrees with me, but that's how I fucking feel. Because they already went to the list and did it. Now you got to take their twenty five dollar card and go back through your own damn registry and buy shit off of it. They should have just did it in the first you place. You take that twenty five dollar card and you go buy some pacifiers because that's all you're gonna get with twenty five fucking dollars. Kid, the fucking Pampers cost more than that. I don't know, man. I'm gonna have me a kid, but I ain't got one yet. So a couple things before I go, I want to say, uh, Naeem has the most beautiful baby Thank out you. of all comics who have. Presented a child to the world. That's a fact. Cause that was his seen baby some, some of these motherfuckers kids. He showed his ba- his baby pictures. I was like, nigga, I'm about to get somebody pregnant today. Like, I'm just going <laughs> to go shoot my shot. And then secondly, um, as we've been talking about and leading up to, uh, he's a resource for different people in the game who understand his knowledge of what's going on around the industry. Mm-hmm. And, and there's been a point in my career where your input – Help me get on national television. Right. And I wanted to publicly say thank you. You're welcome. For your role and me being a part of uh, HBO All Deaf Digital. Mm-hmm. And what you need to know with, with that forever is that you don't owe me anything. When you are in a position to do something for somebody else, you do that. You just pay it forward. I will. Pay it forward. You don't, you never, you don't owe me shit, bro. Anybody that I do anything for... I mean, unless I'm like giving you shit and I need a ride to the airport, you owe me a ride to the airport. But uh-huh. as far <laughs> as far as uh, you know, like yo, I gotta. 
pay this guy back for doing that. You don't, you don't owe me shit, man. You pay that forward. I was in a position to throw some names out there. And um and and you did the shit in Canada too, right? The yeah. Montreal joint. Up north, yeah. Pookie yeah. Called me. Right. So yeah, you, you I, I threw your name in the in the Goodness bucket gracious. for that too. Because that got me signed to three arts in Gershon and changed the trajectory of my whole career. Yeah. So I mean, I, I I like people that are talented. So if somebody deserves something, I feel like you're working hard, you're talented, then I want to help you. You know, you help people that help themselves. Man, and I then, appreciate it, bro. I, I know you're gonna get that point out, but I just want to say this. Keep that right there. Mm-hmm. You're one of the first people to watch my stand-up and appreciate it for the content and the energy. Mm-hmm. You said that at the top of the episode. Right. But just know that for years, people are like, he got high energy, but they couldn't connect the dots with it. But he actually saying some shit, too, if you listen. Right. You were one of the first people like, that was clever and good shit. So, appreciation. Nah, real shit. You know, you know, I keep it a buck. If I ain't had nothing good to say, I just wouldn't say shit. <laughs> just like, just like that. I'm like, yeah, I'm not. I don't say shit just to say it. Right. I could just not say nothing and be fine. Right. That's I know it's a double negative, but you know what the fuck I'm saying. Yeah. I could not say nothing. Just get that on the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. So this is Naeem, man. They can find you online at. Uh, you can find me on my new IG page. Is uh, Naeem the Stars? N a i m t h e s t a r. And that's actually everything for me now, too. My Twitter. My Twitter is squeaky clean now. Oh, you deleted everything. It's squeaky clean. Okay. Yeah, I can go on there. It wasn't nothing on there. Yeah, I could go on there and find some bullshit. It wasn't on there. It, it wasn't nothing <laughs> on there. Know, where to, you tweet at or where you're very comfortable when you tweet. Because your shit be I'm my, like, my shit is, on that bullshit. My yeah. shit is squeaky clean right now. I just need to just keep it that way. Yeah. And my IG, um, you know, I lost my IG. I had 131,000 followers when I lost it. And I was upset about it, especially for promotional reasons. But now I don't feel so bad about it. You know, uh, people definitely don't give you the same respect when you're not verified no more. Mm. But I don't feel so bad about it because I knew that at a certain point, I, I had probably like 5,500 posts. At some point, I was going to have to clean that shit up. Yeah. And now I don't have to worry about that. So, you know, it's all good. Um, that shit is about to. And actually, my engagement is much better now. There you go. Because after they start removing posts and everything, then your engagement gets fucked up and people are not seeing your shit. So now with um, 8,000 followers, I posted, I did a a, a post to promote my show on Sunday, mm-hmm. which is at the Bray Improv, and I had like 360 likes on it. Shit. When I had 131,000 followers, I may not have that many likes yeah. on a post like that. Higher engagement. Yeah. So when I would do post a meme, I might get four or five thousand mm-hmm. likes mm-hmm. if i post a, a picture of me that shit might be like 300 likes right you know what i'm saying so but now well, that, that's that's again haters well you're not adorable oh, uh, it, it doesn't matter <laughs> he was like <laughs> he was it's like, like if, a, if a nigga i make pretty babies nigga. <laughs> if a nigga is smiling in a picture yeah and looks happy. You're yeah. supposed to give a like just off of that. Yeah, but they're like, look at this ugly ass happy nigga. Ah. And they move on. Fair enough. Good guy. All but right. goddamn. <laughs> <laughs>